Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video I'll tell you about the third property of inverse and Laplace transform that is change of scale property. So I'm telling you Laplace as well as inverse Laplace transform simultaneously so that you are able to easily understand the properties in both the cases, right? So let us understand first what is this property all about and then we will apply it to the questions. So the change of scale property for Laplace transform says that whenever Laplace of ft is equal to f of s, then change of scale means when t gets changed to some other parameter. So if I change t to a times t, that means I'm multiplying t with the constant term a. So what happens in the fs function? It will get divided by the multiplier, that is it will get divided by 1 by a and s will shift to s by a, right? So that means if we are multiplying t with a on the right hand side, a gets divided, right? Similarly, if I divide by t on the left side, then a will get multiplied on the right hand side. So it's the reverse effect. So similarly, if I have the change of scale property for inverse Laplace transform, what does it say? That if Laplace inverse of fs is ft, then Laplace inverse of f of as, that means we are multiplying the fs function with a, then on the right hand side in the ft function, what is the change? It will get divided by a, right? So you need to recall that if we are multiplying with a on the left side, whether it is Laplace, whether it is inverse Laplace, on the right hand side, it will get divided. And if on the left hand side we are dividing, then on the right hand side it will get multiplied, right? So this is what is the change of scale property. So let us try to apply this in questions. So the first question says that we need to find out the Laplace transform for ft equal to cos 40 using the change of scale property. So first of all, let us see that how to apply this property. We know that Laplace of cos of t is s upon s square plus 1 square, that is 1, right? So if I have to find out Laplace of cos 40, what am I doing? I am changing the parameter t to 4 times t. That means I am multiplying t with 4. So on the right hand side, what is my resultant? I will divide by 4. And similarly, I will divide s by s by 4, right? So this is my answer. Let us solve it a little bit. So this is 1 by 4 into s by 4. And then we have here s square plus 16. And the denominator 16 will go up, isn't it? So 16 gets reduced. And what do we get? we get answer as s upon s square plus s. Right? So I hope the change of scale property is clear. Let us do some more questions. So we are given that, suppose that the Laplace transform for a certain function ft is s square minus s plus 1 upon 2s plus 1 whole square into s minus 1. We need to find out the Laplace transform of f of 2t. That means for t it is given, we are multiplying t with 2 now. That means what is the effect on the answer? S will, sorry, yeah, s will get shifted to s by 2. You are multiplying by 2, so on the right hand side, s will get shifted to s by 2 and we will divide by 2 also. So, Laplace of f of 2t will be 1 by 2, the multiplier will get divided. And then wherever in my answer I have s, it will get shifted to s by 2, right? Similarly, in the denominator, 2s by 2 plus 1 whole square and then s by 2 minus 1. So how much is this? This is 1 by 2. When I take the LCM in the numerator, we get s square by 4. So this is minus 2s plus 4 divided by 4 and in the denominator this 2 will get cancelled. We have s plus 1 square and then we have s minus 2. This 2 will go up. I'll get a 2 here. 
So 2 gets divided and we get s square minus 2s plus 4 divided by 4 times s plus 1 whole square multiplied by s minus. This is my answer. Right. So I hope you are understanding what is happening. When we are multiplying with 2 on the right hand side it gets divided by 2. Right. Okay. Let's move on to another problem. So here we are now given that Laplace of sine t by t is arc tan 1 by s. We need to find Laplace of sine 3 t by t. Right. So if t sine t by t is given. So to get sine 3t. I need to change t to 3t. So when we change t to 3t. What will happen? I have to divide by 3 on the right hand side. So let us calculate what is Laplace of. So let me convert t to 3t. So I will get Laplace of sine 3t by 3t is equal to 1 by 3 will get divided. And on the right hand side we have arc tan s get shifted to s by 3 right so this is 1 by 3 arc tan 3 by s but here can i take this 3 outside yes i can take this outside so this is laplace of sine 3 t by t <coughs> so i can reduce this 1 by 3 so what is laplace of sin 3 t by t that is arc tan 3 by s right so that becomes my answer right so these are the questions involving the laplace transform for the change of scale property now let us proceed to the next question which is involved with inverse laplace transform let us see how to apply the questions here so here we have Laplace inverse of 1 by s square plus 64 is given to us as sine 8t by 8. <coughs> we need to calculate the Laplace inverse of 1 by s square plus 4. Right. So from s square plus 64, how will I get s square plus 4? Let us see the trick. See if I reduce, if I change s to 4s, what will happen? I'll get 16 s square plus 64. So if I take out 16 common, what am I left with? Am I left with s square plus 4? Yes. So let me change s to 4s. So Laplace inverse of 1 by 4s whole square plus 64 will become, when I'm multiplying with 4, I have to divide by 4 here. So this will become sine 1 by 4 sine t will get reduced to t by 4 so divided by 8 right so now we can write this as laplace inverse of 1 by 16 s square plus 64 this is equal to 1 by 32 sine 8 t by 4 will become sine 2 t right now, when I take out 16 common, I'll get 1 by 16 Laplace inverse of 1 by s square plus 4 is equal to 1 by 32 sine 2t. And so from here, I can multiply with 16. So that will become 1 by 2 sine 2t. This is Laplace inverse of 1 by s square plus 4. And you can prove it. Laplace inverse of 1 by s square plus 4 is 1 by 2 sine. Right? Okay. So let us do one more problem and let's close this topic. <clears throat> so we have Laplace inverse of e to the power minus 1 by s by s to the power half is cos 2 root t upon root pi t and we need to calculate Laplace inverse of e to the power minus e by s. So what is the change in this term and in this term? What is happening? Can you see that we are dividing by S with S by A? Can you see this? 
if I divide S with S by A, will I get this term? Yes. So when we are dividing on the left side, that means on the right hand side, we need to multiply with A, right? So if Laplace inverse of <clears throat> E raised to power minus 1 by S upon S raised to power half is cos 2 root T upon root pi t. So let us now change s to s by a. Similarly, s by a raised to power half. So on the right hand side, I'll multiply with a and I'll have cos 2 root a t divided by I'll change t to a t. Right? What is the left side now? So this is Laplace inverse of e raised to power a will go up. It will become minus a by s. And from here I'll get s to the power half. Denominator a to the power half can be written over here. It's a constant. And I'll get a cos 2 root a t divided by <coughs> pi t and root a over here. Right? So now, this a to the power half is root a only. So root a comes here. It will become root a root a. So this gets cancelled. Right? So what is Laplace inverse of a to the, sorry, it's e to the power, e to the power minus a by s divided by s to the power half. That becomes simply cos 2 root a t divided by root pi t. That becomes the answer. Right? So I hope you understood the change of scale property for both the cases Laplace as well as inverse Laplace transform. Right? So thank you so much for listening to the video. So if you like the video, do hit the like button. And those of you who haven't subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed. Thank you.